Greetings, family, and much love. Jesse Tree here, offering blessings and one love consciousness for you all today. Hope you're having a beautiful, beautiful day. Coming to the end of our global quarantine, it seems. Got some things to share. First and foremost, today is our first water day of the season. And our sick is running through right now. I want to take a minute to share our food for us because I find it pertinent to the conversation I want to take on today. So, right here we have Hugo Culture Swales on contour with our sequia running through it. We have apples, sea buckthorn, currant, pumphrey, asparagus, uh, false indigo, all these fruit trees, nut trees, um, a manner of perennial plants that come back year after year. Got a savvy rain water harvesting design here with deep wood mulch that connects this whole forest system, this fungal system, so that uh, it's more like a forest and less bacterial like grass plants. Um, in the deserts of northern New Mexico, it's very dry. Um, so this is a way to use the water to the best effect possible. So what I want to talk with you today, I'm going to just show you through the garden and walk and talk. We just had our Scorpio full moon. Here's a cherry tree, some mullein. That makes good teepee, and it's a respiratory medicine. Apple, apricot. <laughs> so we just had this Scorpio full moon and there's this whole astrological thing now of basically there will never be a new normal. <laughs> At least not one anything like the old normal. Um, and I question how normal that was. Let's take a look here. Real quick, we got a guild. We got a jujube with all this nice nettles, which is like a mineral accumulator, but it's also in terrific food. Comfrey, which is good bone medicine. Big little happy bumblebee in there on this rosemary and some wild mustards back there and a nitrogen fixing tree where my dog is planted underneath. And an almond and currants and wild buckwheat and goji berries and apples. So I had this dream the other night. It was as the full moon was happening. It was very kind of interesting because I've had this recurring dream about um, being at my favorite camp growing up. Camp Hummingbird is a music camp. And it's always kind of a mix between that and like, is it university or is it camp or is it like, can't quite tell because I had a good time at university too um, but you know I'm at camp and I'm ready to have fun in my usual way and uh, the elders there are all like dressed in white and all silver haired and they're all saying this is you know it's okay for you to be here now but this is the end this is not going to be like this anymore we're we're ending this camp or we're tr more like the vibration was like we're transitioning transmuting and going somewhere else this thing is changing uh, into something else so look at all these currents coming on <laughs> so um I felt this like at once sadness but also like respect and like joy and like kind of excitement about what could be you know as a result of this just being done with you know sort of feeling and so that's what is essentially up with the astrology right now you know we've moved fully into the age of Aquarius this ripening moon Scorpio uh, full moon 
is kind of the end of all that old bull crap. You know, it's like also co-committant with sort of the ending potentially of quarantine uh, coming up now, at which the world will never be the same after. This is uh, this idea of a new normal will be nothing like what things used to be. And I think the quarantine has called into question a lot of things, you know, for the individual and the collective. And that's like, so the main things that have shown up are like health, supply lines, social structure, environment, economics, you know, and our system has been built upon an extractive, an ever extractive model of agriculture and relationship. How many people go into relationships trying to get something out of it? Of course, we all want something out of a relationship. That's kind of a natural part of relationship. But in a relationship, you give as well. That's a massive part of the relationship. It's part of what makes it joyful. Um, so, yeah, people's familial context, like, you know, having to be at home with your family and, like, actually, like, talk with them and work things out, like, any issues, you know, your own issues. Um, we haven't had the time to go inside into our feeling being, to confront our death, to um, work with how do we take care of our health, how do we take care of our supply lines, you know, situation kind of thing. Um, where are resources coming from? You know, what are our relationships? What, why are we doing things that we're doing? What are our motivations? Are we motivated? Are we inspired? You know, there's a difference. Motivation is either whipped from behind or a carrot in front. Inspiration is a fire within. Um, and so... I think in permaculture they say the problem is the solution. So we've got this problem of the COVID virus. <coughs> and it's pointing out all these other problems connected with it. That was gross. I kind of got to do another one. But anyway. <laughs> um, and so I think of this over here as being an example of a potential solution to all these problems. Here I have a polyculture. I have nettles, sage, goji berries, comfrey, peach. So with yarrow growing underneath it also, um, and I'm going to be planting onions in this whole bed that also has elderberry and currant. And I leave the wild things that are there. I plant nitrogen fixers. And it's all connected with wood mulch and mycorrhizal fungi. So, what we have here is an example of natural synergy. And plants working to help other plants, fungi, microorganisms, working to help other microorganisms in a natural ecology of synergy. They've done all these studies, you know, about, you know, sort of the social Darwinism or, or just Darwinism in general. And they found scientifically like 90% of like, and you can look this up in prestigious papers, um, all these studies have shown that or more than I think it was like a hundred percent of these studies showed that all systems, no systems in nature, benefit from violent behavior, violent action and stuff, or separation consciousness, separation, anything. Nature is symbiotic, 
It is collaborative. It is co-creational. And this is the times we're in. I've rambled on beyond 10 minutes. And I don't know if I'll be able to get my video in, but I'll just go for it anyway. Um, this synergy, realizing that we're all one. This whole, this is, this virus is making it clear that this whole planet is one. We're all in, we're on a planetary lockdown right now. This is affecting everyone. Um, and so we're going to have to take these things of supply lines, health, um, health of the planet and economics more seriously. And we don't realize that our economy and our life is based 100% on this stuff right here. Plant and animal life. 100%. And that we, as co-creators in the environment, in our ecological niche, can actually function to make this whole world more abundant. And if we gather together in a collective effort to take responsibility for our own health, the health of the land, and the health of natural systems, we'll be healthy. Um, I think all vectors could be um, fixed by this model of localism with collaborative um, community effort to grow food with regenerative practices like permaculture that the very act of being in the sunlight and the air exercising, eating fresh plant foods is curative and that this whole thing with disease is connected. It's very good to, you know, take these measures uh, in the mode of care of one another to wash our hands and to wear masks and to sanitize and to quarantine. But what is ever more important is to take care of your individual immune integrity and your integrity of mind, body, and spirit all ways and forms. So, because it's, who else is going to do it? You, that's your duty. And if you're not taking care of your, yourself, then other people got to take care of you. And then they subject themselves to the potential of getting sick themselves. So, um, if we take on this model of, you know, the self-sovereignty, the self responsibility and duty to take care of our own health and take care of the land and each other take care of our ourself our land ourself our families our land and then each other in that order then we can create peace and abundance naturally we can have food and medicine um, or I won't call the herbs medicine they're much more than that so, um, you know, if we can utilize these helpers, these beings who want to help us replenish, heal the earth and ourselves, then, you know, that's a boon for everyone. So, that's what I'm trying to pitch you all today. Obviously, I'm kind of feeling stammered in my uh, communication. But <laughs> I did one video already, but and I keep, like, having little... Anyway, check this out. I got some blue corn and garlic here. And cannabis. I'm going to put that stuff in now. Alright, blessings, tribe.